Right now, we're talking about balance sheet journal entries and T-accounts. And now this is a bit of a continuation of a previous lesson, so I'll leave that link in the description below. But now we're talking about a slightly more complex situation that occurs all the time. Now, the first thing we wanna do is get our cheat sheet ready for increases and decreases in debits and credits. So I have it right here. Our assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. We start with the accounting equation. Now, what's the first thing we do? I'm gonna put pluses on the outsides because increases in assets are a debit and increases in owner's equity are a credit. Now, I'm gonna put the opposite subtraction signs in. And now liabilities is an easy one because they follow owner equity because they're on the same side of the equation. And so now that I have that on the side to help, I'm ready to dig into these transactions. Now the first one is my company signs a contract for a mobile app to be developed for $9,000. Now, what's the journal entry for this? Well, there is no journal entry because right now at this time, I have not given them any payment and they have not delivered any code or software that I've signed the contract for. So the only thing that has been exchanged is promises. And when that's the case, no journal entry is required. So now this might be different had I maybe given them a prepayment. So then that would initiate a journal entry, but it, unless I do that, no journal entry is required. So the second transaction is when I receive that software. So I finally received the full $9,000 of software that they promised to deliver. Now I am going to pay them $4,000 cash right then and I'm gonna make a promise to pay them the other $5,000 in most likely the next month. So let's work on the journal entry for that. So first I like to start with what I know. So I know that I am going to give them $4,000 right then. So cash, I'm gonna be paying them cash. Decreases in cash or an asset are done with the credit. So. I'm gonna put the entry on the credit side of cash, $4,000. And at the same time, I'm gonna put $4,000 in the credit column of my cash T account to show that that's a reduction. Now, what else do I know? I know that I received the full $9,000 in software for that mobile app. So software is also an asset. So I received the full $9,000 because increases in assets are done with a debit. I'm also going to put that on the debit column of my software T account. Now, right now, these do not balance. $9,000 in debits and I have $4,000 in credits. So I need more credits to make this balance. Now I made a promise to pay my vendor. So this is in the short term. So therefore it's gonna be an account payable. Now accounts payable or promises to pay our liabilities and I increase liabilities with the credit. So this may work out pretty well. So I'm gonna credit accounts payable for the remaining $5,000 that I promised. And I will also show that in my accounts payable T account. And so now I have $9,000 in debits and $9,000 in credits and this balances. So there's my journal entry. Now the final transaction is that we're going to complete our payment to this particular vendor in the following month. So what does the journal entry like look like to complete that payment? So again, let's start with what we know. 
We're gonna complete the payment, so therefore we are giving that vendor cash. So once again, we're gonna decrease the asset because cash is an asset. So we're gonna decrease it with a credit. So let's start there. We're gonna credit cash for the remaining $5,000. And I'm gonna add that to the debit side of my T account. And so I don't need to touch software. So I do need to decrease that liability. I need to wipe it out or kill that liability for $5,000. And to do that, uh, decreases in liabilities are done with the debit. So this will work out perfect. So I'm going to debit that accounts payable for $5,000 add it to my accounts payable T account. And now I have a zero credit balance. I've successfully paid down that accounts payable to zero. And that's how you account for these type of balance sheet transactions.